I'm going to read a very, very brief chapter. This is a story from my book, Apartment 4, Be Like in Brooklyn. I grew up on the rough streets of East Flatbush in the 60s and 70s. Anybody here from Brooklyn? All right, Brooklyn's in the house. All right, this is a very short story. They're all true. This is about my late father. Mom always told me I never cared about looks. If I did, I wouldn't love your father so much. I was surprised when she said that. True, he had always been self-conscious about losing his hair and combed the few remaining strands in a vain attempt to cover what was no longer there. And yes, his nose went every which way. It had been broken seven times from flying fists and elbows in high school basketball competition. And oddly enough, a doctor told him his protruding brow was rare and linked him to the Mongols and Genghis Khan. He always laughed about that one. But that was all city for Staten Island's Curtis High School. He'd fulfilled many an athlete's dream of playing at Madison Square Garden. And during the big one, he served as an army corporal, helping to liberate a concentration camp. But most importantly to me, he was the warmest and funniest guy I'd ever met. He was my hero. Dad drove a New York City yellow cab. Every night he'd come home with stories to tell. People always said he had a book in him, but who had time to write when you drove 14 hours a day, six days a week? But he told the stories like a natural storyteller, again and again to the point where I could probably tell them myself. One day I came down Broadway on a rainy, windy night, and some lunatic on a motorcycle cut me off. The light changed and he stopped on a dime, and I missed his back foot by about a quarter of an inch. In those days, helmets weren't compulsory, and he turns around and I look at him. His hair is turning gray, he has like the bluest eyes in the United States, and of course it's Paul Newman, God's gift to the women. So I had two women in the back of the cab, and he started to curse me, and he was so wrong it was unbelievable. So I said, why don't you go back to Hollywood, you big ham? So, so the next thing you know, I'm out of the cab, and the both of us are pushing each other and winding up. And I'm about two inches taller, and at the time, maybe 25 pounds heavier. Mr. Newman's nose was going to get broken. My nose had been broken about seven times playing ball, so it wouldn't make much difference. But I would have been the most hated cab driver in the US because at the time, which was probably around 1967 or 68, he was really going strong. Finally, we backed off when a big Irish cop broke it up. And the kick line to the story is that in my back pocket, I had tickets to a play with Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. True story. I love my dad's cat stories. They seem larger than life, much like that. Thank you. You swore you'd never fall for somebody like me. I swore the same as you just conversely, but there we were, conversing after all, and from that simple conversation we began to fall in love, where nothing is impossible, love, where nothing is an obstacle, love, where the light comes shining through, shining Love 
swore you'd never fall for somebody like me. Just let them stand up and do a one-man show. That's a slower death. That's the real way to go. Thank you all very much tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I shared a little bit of my life and a few of my songs that touched me. And I thank you all so very, very much. God bless you. Have a nice summer.